thing so old. The war wound right there. <laughs> <laughs> Throwback city right there. Nice. I don't even make them like this anymore. <laughs> no spandex, no nothing in this. <laughs> I don't even think we had a ridge, uh, a Hawk logo on here. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about Throwback Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> That's Throwback Thursday right there. <laughs> uh, man, I first got in this, well, I grew up on a military base in Germany, you know what I'm saying? And being a kid on base, that's all we ever really had was playing sports, so from the day I was born, it was always about sports. And, uh, you know, every kid dreams about winning a Super Bowl and playing football. And as a kid, there's nothing bigger on a military base in Germany than youth football. We're talking parents getting fights over it. It might as well be the Super Bowl of the NFL. So that's where it all started for me. And it just grew from there. It was, I don't know, it was just a release and it was just something it was always a way to be competitive and I got an older brother so being competitive was just something that you know was always in my nature because well you got the sibling rivalry so why not take it to the field and you know enhance that so in my mind it was if I could beat my older brother then playing with the kids my age would be nothing so whenever we went out it wasn't just oh let's go have fun Mo let's go play it was no nah, I'm gonna beat you because I know in the end that's gonna make me better you know in the future so that's where it started for me. Yeah. All right, so um, let's talk about um, sports in high school, okay? Football player, played some basketball. Did you ever get any any shit from the upperclassmen? Well, yeah, because, you know, <laughs> the, the toughest part for me was it wasn't that I was I was Brian. It was, oh, there's Moe's little brother. So I already, I coming into high school, I already had that shadow because my brother was there and he was already you know, putting his mark in the school. So I never really liked being in my brother's shadow because growing up, it was always, hey, there's Mo's little brother. And I wanted to be more than just Mo's little brother. It wasn't about me being big or making my name known. It was just, hey, I'm my own person. This is me. So to come in and have expectations already set on me because of what my brother was doing, yeah. you know, that just made me work harder because I'm not one for failing. I hate losing. Um, I'm a competitor in every sense of the nature. If we play, if we play rock paper scissors right now, I'm gonna play you till we win. That's just, that's just the way it goes. You can win a hundred times. I just gotta win once. I don't care if you let me win. That's just the way it goes. So, um, coming into high school, I definitely caught a lot of trash from people. Um, I remember them trying to throw me in trash cans. You know the whole freshman hazing thing. Yeah. Um, especially out here on this field when it got real muddy, uh, dragging us around in the mud and stuff. But you know, it's all about paying dues. I knew, I knew the rule of the game, and mm -hmm. I just went with it. I didn't stress about it. Okay, now River Ridge High School, it kind of had, you know, some sort of a bad reputation in those yeah. times, especially, you know, when you were starting high school and, you know, just coming up. There was a lot of, a lot of negative, um, negative things said about the school, but I mean, you know, some of them were true. Um, it had a lot of a lot of gang culture within the school. How did would do you think that like sports kind of helped keep you away from that kind of stuff? Um, I would or, say yeah, I would definitely say it helped me help keep me away. Um, I knew that if I wanted to go somewhere with sports, mm -hmm. I didn't have time to worry about all the stupid stuff and getting caught up in something because me getting caught up one time could literally destroy everything. So between that and my parents at home keeping me you know hella humble and you know, keeping me grounded with having big dreams. I didn't even think twice about it. Every time something came up, it was like, yeah, all right, I'll see y'all later. Y'all go do y'all <laughs> thing. But, you know, I never really got hassled too much about it because people knew what I was about and what I was doing. It's good. So you made it You made it known that, you know, you were focused on what yeah. you wanted to do. Yeah. You had goals. That's good. Okay, so what position did you play in football? Man, I played, I was a starting receiver and starting free safety punt return kick return and uh, honestly I didn't come off the field unless I was getting a water break um, I, I tried to get coach I remember I asked coach Clark one day I said hey can can I come off of you know punt team and field goal like what's the point of me being out there it's just one play 
And he's like, no, we need you. I'm like, all right, fine. <laughs> so, you know, whatever. I was never one to really sit there and be like, no, this is where I need to be, coach. If coach said it, it's like, all right, that's where you need me. If that's what the team needs, and that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's move forward to, you know, years later. Mm -hmm. I mean, what year? first of all, what year did you graduate? 99. 99, okay. Now it's 2013. Yep. All right, let's talk about this uh, this Hall of Fame that River Ridge High ah. Schools put you in, man. Because you just told me the story. I like that story. So, I got a Facebook met or I got a friend request from an old coach, uh, Gary Larson, on Facebook, and uh, um, I accepted it. He messaged me, said, "Hey, man, thanks for the friend request. I'm still at the school. Can you get a hold of me when you get a chance?" And I was like, "When now?" So I called the school and asked for him, and. Uh, in my mind, because I do health and fitness now, I'm thinking in my mind, he wants me to do something fitness with the kids or maybe train a sports team or a couple kids individually. And um, I get on the phone. I'm like, what's up? You know, he cut straight to the chase. He starts going on and he's like, yo, man, we've been real busy over here. We got a list of names together. We got a panel of people to vote on names. And and uh, your name came up and it was voted on. So I need a picture from you. And he just kept going and going. And, you know, I, I caught a brief word of Hall of Fame and he just kept rambling on. And I said, wait, 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 rewind it, stop. And he just kept trying to go. I was like, Larson, stop, stop. He's like, what? I said, take it back a little bit. I said, what did you just say? It's like, did you just say I was in the Hall of Fame? He's like, yeah, we're doing the first ever River Ridge Sports Hall of Fame and you're part of the first class to go in. And it got real quiet. And he's like, Brian, I was like, this is a joke, right? And he's like, no, I'm serious. And at that point, you know, I got quiet because I'm not one to brag on stuff. So for me, that was it was really humbling to know that, you know, 14 years removed from high school that people still remember. And, uh, you know, what I'm saying that that mark was left here at the school because, you know, for me playing, it was never, you know, hey, I'm going to have my name hung up in the school somewhere one day. No, nah, it was just be the best I can because I want to go play at the next level and me being the best I can will do better, not just for me, but for my team. I'm all about getting a win, so why not play hard and go hard? Yeah. So to to know that it's been recognized 14 years after, that's that's hella humbling. Like, I can't even, I got no words for it, so. Yeah, that's cool, man. So, so, um, so you mentioned you were, you know, doing fitness and things like that. Um, so what are you doing now? Uh, I am a group fitness instructor. Mm. Uh, I teach ripped. Um, I'm certified in ripped. I'm certified in P90X. I'm certified in insanity. Uh, I teach. Um, I teach speed and agility. I coach football. Like, <laughs> for me, it's people think I'm a gym rat, and it's not, that's not the case. Um, being healthy and being fit is more than just you looking good on the outside it does so much for you mentally on the inside. And not only does it make you a better person because you feel better about yourself, but it makes those around you want to be better for themselves. So it's, to me, it's just an infectious thing. And to go out and take this person that felt this way about themselves and make them feel a certain way, make them feel better about themselves, like it's, it's, it's super rewarding. And I can't, you know, there's, you can't put a price on that to me. To have someone come to you and be like, man, if it wasn't for you, I don't know where I would be. That's mm. that's really great. And then with speed and agility, teaching the teaching the next kids now that are trying to go pro or go whatever it is to aspire to, you know, dream big. You know, that, that's that's also rewarding because had I known what I know now back in high school, like I don't know where I would be. But I just want to pass that on so the kids that are in my situation when I was in high school, get that knowledge before it's too late and they can go on and do what they need to in their lives to live a better life, be it sports or whatever be. Hmm. That's a good message. Do you have anything else you wanna, you wanna add before we cut it off? Yeah, man, you know, for anybody aspiring to do whatever it is, you know what I'm saying, dream big, you know what I'm saying? I had dreams of trying to go pro and that's what I worked for until my knee gave out, you know what I'm saying? So dream big. Don't let the doubters tell you no because in the end it's not if you give up on your dream, you're the one that looks dumb. you're the one that looks dumb. 
in the end, if you go for your dream, even if you don't make it, if you catch a glimpse of it, if you, if you get a taste of it, they're the ones that end up looking stupid. Don't let nobody tell you you can't be what you want to be, man. Aim high, miss small, go for it. Literally, so I didn't know about this until after I graduated and my mom gave this to me. Literally every time my name was mentioned in any kind of article my senior year, be it the Tacoma paper, the Olympian, um, I don't know if it was ever the Seattle Times or anything, but every time my name was mentioned, my mom cut a clip out. She took the paper and she put it in this binder. And I'm like, damn, mom, this is a lot of newspaper clippings. Like, holy crap. And I had no idea she was doing this. You know, there's photos of us in there of our senior year and stuff, being silly. Basketball against Lincoln, the prep all-star team, All right. Ha! <laughs> that's yeah. classic. See, that's how I remember you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's about a foot and a half ago of hair. <laughs> I used to shave it all the time. Yeah, that's me. Yep. <laughs> yeah, prep athlete of the week. Also, we got Bridge Division Championships. That was honest. Playoff game against Cascade. A letter from the Tribune. What is this? Congratulations. You've been selected to the News Tribune All Area Team. We'll be shooting a photo of the team. Oh yeah, I remember that. Bring your dark colored jersey. They gave me bad directions. I missed the, I missed the group photo. Oh. I made it for the individual, but I missed the group. <laughs> River Ridge favored South against South Kitsap. Prep athlete of the week. Prep athlete of the week. I'll never look at this stuff. This is funny. Hawks win first playoff game. Hooper passes the 1,000 yard mark. I found out later on that I was the first person to ever break 1,000 at the school and receiving. Wow. I don't think anybody has since. <laughs> Prep at the high school highlights. Yeah, look at that. Right next to him. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he went on to NFL and did big things. I'll give it to him. But I gave it to him in high school. <laughs> I gave it to him. <laughs> Marcus Trufant. Yeah. yeah. We did lose to him, though, when we played him. But that one hurt. I wanted that win. I think they ended up taking, I think they either took the title or they lost the championship game. Yeah, right there. We lost to Wilson Rams, 41 to 14. <laughs> I gave it to him. Yeah, this book is big. I think it's cool that your mom kept all that stuff. Yeah, man, she kept she kept everything. I I got it somewhere. She's got a box of my recruiting letters and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean the. Like all this is cool and I love it and it's good to show my son this and it's always something I can look back on and you know pass down to my kids and so on and so forth but for me the biggest memory I have was when we played FOSS at FOSS and uh, we didn't it wasn't the, the division championship game per se we just needed to beat them to clinch the division championship and once that clock hit zero we all we went so stupid on the sideline and I felt like it was one of them them movie moments like a dramatic scene like it actually happened to me I was sitting there and like the whole team just kind of went away because they were cheering and stuff and I looked up in the stands and I saw a bunch of the kids that had came down from Olympia up to uh, Olympia down up to Tacoma and I looked up and they made this huge banner and it said division champs and I just sat there and it was just like wow it really happened we did it because everybody on varsity that was seniors, we had been talking about it since our freshman year. We was like, we don't care what varsity does, but when it's our time, we're taking over. And that's what happened, so. Yeah. That's cool.